Good afternoon and welcome to another accounting session. Today we will be talking about manufacturing enterprises and I would just like to welcome every matriculant today who's made the time to come out on a Sunday afternoon at 5 o'clock, 5 to 6 session. Today we're talking about manufacturing enterprises and manufacturing is kind of unique. It is quite new to the syllabus and um, you know, it's one of those sections that I've seen occur in exams over and over. So I really want to go through it very thoroughly today. The, when we talk about manufacturing, we're talking about the place where items are made. In other words, at the factory, on the factory floor. So what we look at is all the costs involved in making that item. Because remember, that item is made and then sold. And then you, the end user, ends up using it. So it gets made at the factory, gets sold to a retailer or a wholesaler, and then the end user uses it. So what we want to do is we want to look at that initial cost. How much does it cost to make that item? In other words, there's certain costs that go in, into that item and we talk, call that manufacturing costs. So what I want to do today is I want to look at terminology because you have to understand certain terms before you can identify with the work. So I just want to turn to our PowerPoint and so that we can look at some of the terms and then we're actually going to work through an exercise. So let's turn to the PowerPoint. It says costs in the manufacturing environment. Now there are two types of costs. There are direct costs and there are factory overhead costs that we look at. Direct costs refers to direct material costs and direct labor costs. We will look at the breakdown of those in a minute. So it's direct material costs, direct labor costs. Factory overheads is made up of indirect material costs, indirect labor costs and any other factory related expense. Uh, learners, we are not on any page yet. We are just going through terminology, so I don't want you to uh, even open up your books yet. I just want you to watch your screens, and we're just going through some terminology. I will point out the terms in a minute. So let's go back to the PowerPoint. There we have all our different costs. You must know this terminology. So what are direct and indirect costs then? You have direct and indirect materials. Let's look at it. Direct materials. The raw materials used to manufacture the product. So it's all the raw materials that go into making the product. Our product we're going to use is a leather bag. So here's our example. Leather and the zip to make the bag. We'll say is the direct materials. Why do we call it direct? Because we can quantify what goes into that bag. Then the indirect materials that go into the bag any other materials needed to manufacture the product but cannot be identified directly in that specific item. Example, the cotton to make the bag, the glue to make the bag and, the, and anything else that goes into the bag. So you have your direct and your indirect materials. The materials is the items used to make the bag. Then you get direct and indirect labor. Okay? Direct labor is what we call touch labor. In other words, it's the people on the factory floor that makes the item. They physically touch and make the item. Employees directly involved in the manufacturing process. For example, the cutters, the machinists and the packers on the factory floor. Then your indirect labor is employees not directly involved. In other words, they don't touch the item. And that is your supervisor, your factory supervisor, your factory security, and your factory cleaner. So, learners, you have to know the difference between direct and indirect. Let's just go through it again. Direct, direct materials are the things that you can easily identify by looking at the bag. You can see, oh, this bag is made up of leather. Direct labor, they physically touch the item. Okay. Then we have factory overheads. Factory overheads are those things that cannot be directly linked to making the item. So they are all your indirect costs and your factory related expenses. So here we have our indirect costs again, our indirect materials, indirect labor, depreciation on factory equipment, factory water and electricity, maintenance to the factory 
and um, any other factory related expense. Okay, learners, what we're going to do today is we're going to look at, now we've seen some terminology, now we're going to look at the production cost statement. Now the production cost statement is the statement in which you calculate your cost of production for that year. What did my production cost me in that particular year? Terms that come up again is direct, indirect. So you have to be able to distinguish between what is direct, in other words, your direct labor, your direct materials you put together, and then all your indirect items you'll put together. And so really what we're going to look at today is being able to distinguish between direct and indirect. And everything we do with regards to the production cost statement is factory related. In other words, we don't look at sales and distribution. We don't look at any administrative costs when it comes to the production cost statement. We only look at what happens on the factory floor and how that item moves from the factory floor. It gets manufactured and then moves out. So all factory floor related expenses we look at when we look at our production cost statement. So let's go to the PowerPoint again. Our production cost statement is a statement in which the cost of production of all finished goods are calculated. Okay. So you have your direct costs, your factory overhead costs, your work in progress at the beginning of the year minus your work in progress at the end of the year and that equals the cost of your finished goods. But it's not so simply put. This is really what the production cost statement looks at. Direct costs plus factory overhead costs plus all your work in progress at the beginning of the year minus all your work in progress at the end of the year and that is your cost of production of finished goods. So now that we've gone through some background and we cannot assume that everyone knows this work. So now that we've gone through some background, let's do a production cost statement. Okay, in front of me I have page 52, so please turn in your books to page 52, and we're going to do activity 7.1. It is the one on smug fit calculators. Okay, I have here your production cost statement, and that is found on page 63 of your answer book. So you have to have open in front of your learners page 52, of your question book and page 63 of your answer book and we'll be working through it systematically. So let's look at our production cost statement. Here we have again our direct cost that I was talking about. Our direct cost is made up of direct materials and direct labor. Okay then we have our factory overhead costs that's what I spoke about earlier on our factory overhead costs and our direct costs plus factory overhead costs equals our total manufacturing cost. Don't worry, we'll work through the example now. Then we have work in progress at the beginning of the year minus work in progress at the end of the year. And it gives us the cost of production of finished goods. So this is the layout of your production cost statement, the face of the production cost statement. Learners, you have to study this. This you have to memorize and study in this order you have to complete this in this order okay can we turn our attention to the powerpoint again in front of me in front of you you have your production cost statement before we can start our production cost statement we have to do the first step we have to do our direct material cost note first Okay, so you can't just finish a production cost statement. You first have to do your direct material cost note. Second, you have to do your direct labor cost note. And then thirdly, you have to do your factory overhead cost note. So let's start with that note. The direct material cost note, we need to know that direct materials refer to all raw materials okay so go to page 63 on page 63 you're going to fill in there it is page 63 you see it's all blank and this is a previous exam question so you would have to memorize what goes there 
please note I just said that direct materials refer to all raw materials. Okay, all raw materials. So, you will have to fill in the following. Let's go to the PowerPoint again. The first thing you need is, and you're going to fill in as I'm going, please fill in opening stock. So your opening stock of raw materials, you're going to put in first. So write down opening stock in the first line. The next line, and learners, you really have to write a bit fast. Okay, opening stock. The next thing you're going to put in is your net purchases. Now your net purchases is your purchases minus your returns. And you'll see in the exercise, they have purchases minus returns. So write down net purchases purchases on the next line after that you're going to have to put in your carriage on purchases so on the next line please write down carriage on purchases and learners you have to memorize this so this is something you're going to have to study the layout of this note after that if you have custom duty which is import duties. If you're importing your materials from overseas, you're going to pay custom duty. So after that, you put in custom duty, then closing stock of your raw materials. So write down closing stock in your book, please, on page 63. And then that gives you your direct material cost. That is your calculation. So learners, where are we going to find this information? Okay, go to page 52. Now remember in accounting, you're always trying to find information and the information's all over the show. So firstly, you have to know what you're looking for. Then secondly, you have to find it. So now that we know what we're looking for, we're looking for raw material stock. And here I have my opening balances on the 1st of March, the beginning of the financial year. I'm on page 52. Okay, there I have my opening balances. And there they say raw material stock, 107,000. So opposite opening stock, I'm going to write in 107,000. That's my opening stock. My next item Opposite my opening stock, I'm going to put in 107,000 and I'll show you in a minute. My next item I'm going to need, learners, is my net purchases. So now I'm going to go to the next page where it gives me the summary of transactions for the year. In other words, items I bought for the year. And there I have raw materials purchased for the year. 408,000, but I'm not going to put 408,000 in. Because remember I said net purchases is purchases minus returns. So now I have my purchases of raw materials. I want to know whether I returned items. So let me go and look in my additional information. I don't see any returns here. But I can't assume that there's no returns. So I'm going to go and look in my additional information just to see if there's anything that they mention about returns. So... I read and I see, oh, there's raw materials. It says, raw materials costing 16000 was purchased from electronic suppliers and it was returned on the 29th of Feb. It says, this transaction was not recorded. So that 16000 I'm going to take my 408000 And I'm going to minus my 16,000 to get my net purchases. Okay. And that amount I'm going to put opposite net purchases. So it's my purchases minus my returns. We'll fill it in in a minute, learners. Then my next item, they say, yes, it is 392,000 and we'll put it in in a minute. The next item I must find is carriage on purchases. So I'm just finding all my information. Then I'm going to do my calculations. Remember, you have to know what you want and then find it. There it says carriage on purchases of raw materials. So 15,400 I'm going to put in. Okay, opposite carriage on purchases. So you list what you need and then you fill it in. 
Now I remember I need custom duty. So I must check if there's anything to do with custom duty and I can assume here that the items were not imported so I don't need custom duty. And then finally learners, I need my closing stock. My closing stock you always find at the towards the end of the exercise where they say inventories on hand on the 29th of Feb. Okay, I'm moving between three pages here because the exercise is over three pages, so I'm by page 54 now. So you just have to keep paging with me. There I have raw materials, closing stock. So if we can just turn to the PowerPoint again, let's fill in the information. Remember I said there's opening stock, 107,000. I found that with opening stock. There's my net purchases, 408,000 minus 16,000. And yes, it is 192,000. Thank you, Bongeka. Carriage on purchases, I put in. There's no custom duty. I minus my closing stock. And let's see, Sianda and Tina both got 428,900. Well done. They seldom give you the wording for the notes, so you really have to memorize the notes. Okay, let's move on. Direct labor and learners, it seems as though you know this work and I'm very impressed. So let's look at our direct labor costs. What do we need for direct labor? Now let me tell you about direct labor. It is the touch labor. In other words, it's all the labor that goes into making the product. But it is not only that, it's any other expense related to that labor. So if you have any contributions by way of pension fund, by way of unemployment fund, you have to put that in as well. So let's look at any factory related labor. Okay, I'm not going to have stock. So I look and I see by my summary of transactions on page 53, I see there I have factory wages. They use the word factory, which means it's factory related wages. So the 192,000 Rand I'm gonna need. Okay, I'm gonna put in factory wages. Now I'm gonna see if there's any other related expense for factory. And I see, ah, oh, I've got unemployment fund on page 54. I've got unemployment fund and I'm gonna put in the contribution. Okay, 1% and I'm also gonna put in the Pension fund, it says all employees contribute towards the pension fund. The deduction, I'm not going to put in the deduction. I want the contribution. The contribution is 10.5% of the monthly earning. We'll talk about that now towards the pension fund. So what do I have here, learners? What do I have here? Let's go back to the PowerPoint. Okay, what do I have here? You have your note in front of you. It's blank. Okay, it's blank, so what am I going to put in there? I'm going to put in factory wages. I'm going to put in unemployment contributions, unemployment fund contribution. And I'm going to put in pension fund contribution. Learners, please note, not the deduction, the contribution, please. Okay? And that will give me my direct labor cost. I'll give you a minute to write that down. Okay, factory wages, unemployment fund contribution, pension fund contribution gives me your direct labor cost. So let's take out the amounts. 192,600 was factory wages. They gave it to you. Then... Your unemployment fund was 1,926, which is 1% of your factory wages. And your pension fund contribution is 20,223. That is 10,5% of your factory wages. And let's see, Sianda is right again, 214,749. Sianda, you are doing very well. Okay, so Sianda has been working ahead, and that's excellent. But I want to challenge Sianda now, because the next note is quite complicated, and Tina's working well as well. Okay, 
So we've got that. Lovely. Nice to see that the learners are interacting with me today. Our next note, learners, is the factory overhead costs. Factory overhead costs, your indirect and any factory related expense. So let's see on the exercise what our factory related expenses are. Firstly, let's put in our indirect materials. Okay, indirect materials we have to put in, but don't put in the amount, learners. We're going to write it in. I'm just identifying all our indirect costs. So we have indirect materials that is um, part of our manufacturing overheads or our factory overheads. Then we have factory foreman, the salary to the factory foreman. Learners, we don't put in administrative staff. We don't put in sales staff. We only consider factory-related expenses. Okay? I see advertising. I will not put in advertising ever. So I must scratch out advertising because advertising is a sales-related expense. Another sales-related expense is bad debts. So you will never put bad debts and you will never put advertising in your production cost statement because they are not factory-related expenses. Okay, they sales and distribution expenses. I see vehicle expense. And I just want to see if there's anything to do with vehicle expense because vehicle expense could be a factory-related expense. I see rates, I see insurance, and I see water and electricity. So I'm going to read and see whether those expenses relate to my factory. Okay, so it's very important now to read the additional information. And we're going to do calculations. So it says, water and electricity must be apportioned in the ratio 3 to 1 between the factory and the admin block. So water and electricity will be a factory expense. Okay, they say expenses in, relates to, in, rela uh, in respect of rates and insurance must be divided equally between the factory and the admin. So that's also a factory expense. And then they also say the vehicle is used to transport raw materials to the factory. So that's also a factory-related expense. And then there's another one that we must never forget. It is depreciation. So learners, it's very important that you first identify your expenses. So let's look at the PowerPoint again. And you're going to write in. Okay, you're going to write in the following. Indirect material. Please write that in. You will always put indirect material and indirect labor in first. Those are the two uh, factory overhead costs that you will always have. So you put in indirect material and you will have indirect labor. Right. Then, learners, you will have factory water and electricity. Please write in factory water and electricity because you must know that it's only the portion that goes to the factory that you're going to consider. You're going to have factory rates and you're writing down, you're filling in factory rates. Then you're going to have factory insurance. You're writing that down, learners. We've identified all the expenses. Please list it and then you do your calculations. It's much easier. You won't leave out anything then. You have factory vehicle expense. These are all the expenses that I've identified. And I hope that um, Sisi Misele High School is not experiencing any problems anymore because they were experiencing problems. And I hope that they're on board now again with this lesson. And then depreciation. Okay, and the depreciation is only going to be related to the factory. And that will give you your factory overhead costs. Right, learners, can we do our calculations now? Okay, let's work. You need to take a pen and we're going to show the calculations. Now they say, let's work from the top. Water and electricity must be apportioned in the ratio 3 is to 1. Now, if I have, and this is the example I want to use, if I have three, I'm going to use this as an example, there's my three, there's my one. How many do I have? I have four. So the whole is four, there's three, 
there's one. So 3 is to 1 means that it's 3 over 4. Okay, so I take my water and electricity amount, 30,000, and I'm going to work here on the side, hoping that you'll be able to see 30,000, okay, times that by 3 over 4. Let's take our calculators, 30,000 times 3 divided by 4, it is 22,500 that must go to the factory. 22,500 going to the factory. Okay, then, so that goes to the factory. Expenses in respect of rates and insurance must be distributed equally. Okay, so insurance will go equally, but they say rates on the property amounting to 3,600 was paid for the period 1 Jan 2008 to June. So this is a six month period. Okay, so I need to take out the four months that was prepaid. Because I can't now just take my rates amount and divide it by two. It's the incorrect amount. Part of that amount is a prepaid expense. I paid in advance. So I take 3,600. I divide it by six and I times it by four. Okay, 3,600 to get what it is a month. 600 rand a month times four is my prepaid expense, 2,400. So I take 2,400 away from rates and then divide by 2. Okay, so for rates, okay, let, let me rather just work here because it's looking very untidy now. Rates, I take my amount of 20,040 minus 2,400. Okay, 20,040 minus 2,400, I get 17,640, divide that by 2, and 8,820 goes to the factory. 8,820 goes to the factory. Then my insurance, I just simply take the amount by 2, 31,200, divide by 2, 31,200 divided by 2, and I get 15,600, and that goes towards insurance. So learners, please just fit in the amounts as we're working it out. That goes opposite rates, factory rates. That goes opposite factory insurance. And 22,500 goes opposite factory water and electricity. Okay. Let's look at the vehicle. We must still do indirect materials and indirect labor. Okay, we'll do that in a minute. It says, the vehicle is used to transport raw materials to the factory as well as to deliver finished products to customers. All related expenses, all related expenses, remember that, must be shared equally between the manufacturing, which is the factory, and the selling departments. So, you simply take your vehicle expense... Right, your vehicle expense, which is 14,500, you divide by 2, equals 7,250, and that goes opposite vehicle expense. Okay, that goes opposite vehicle expense. Right, people are saying I'm going too fast. I don't see how. Right? We're working down systematically, learners, and you have to stay with me. You have to kind of work fast. Otherwise, you're never going to get through your exam papers if you're going to really work very slowly. So let's go through it again. That there goes for water and electricity. Okay. We worked out rates, 8,820. Remember, we first took away the prepaid expense. And then we divided by 2. We simply took insurance and we divided by 2. That goes opposite insurance, and then we said that amount there goes opposite vehicle expense. Okay, we simply took our vehicle expense and we divided by two. Okay, let's move on to depreciation. We nearly done. Depreciation. I'll slow down a bit so that some people can get to where we are. Okay, we're just reading down and we're filling in. 
we're, we're actually not even filling in any amounts. Okay, someone asks me, um, where does the, the, four, the, when I worked out the ratio, learners, three over four, it says, a ratio of three is to one. I'll explain if you don't understand what ratios are, I'll explain what a ratio is. If they say a ratio is three is to one, it means that the whole is four, okay? If I have four items here, and one I apportion three, and the other I apportion one. That's three is to one. So of the whole, then, that is three of four. So it's three of four. So that is where I get my three over four. Because a ratio is something is to one, and the whole is four. Okay. Three plus one is four. So that portion there is three over four. That portion there is one over four. Okay. Thank you. I hope I explained that. Okay. Learners, let's move on now. Let's work with depreciation. Okay. Depreciation for the year is as follows. Depreciation on factory plant. So you simply put that amount in with depreciation. That goes in because it's related to the factory. But with the vehicles, remember we said all related expenses with regards to the vehicle. So now we have to take the depreciation on vehicles and divide that by two as well. Because whatever expense you have with regards to the vehicle must be divided equally. Okay, so I take my depreciation on my factory plant, it's 29,640, and I plus half of 10,210, I plus that amount. So, 29,640 plus 10 to 1, oh, divided by 2, 5,105. And so my depreciation total is 29,640. 34,745. That is my depreciation. Okay, so learners, what you do is you work all the way down your script. Okay, you work all the way down your script and you work out the information. And it goes in, remember on the PowerPoint, we first filled in the relevant information that needs to go in. Okay, so that is where we are at now. So, after we've done all of that, they will always, in, in manufacturing, they'll always give you ratios to work with. They'll always talk about the sales and distribution. They'll always talk about the, the, the selling department, the, the advertising department. Just remember to separate your expenses. You only take factory information into consideration. Okay, now... Can we talk about indirect materials and indirect labor? It's very, very important that I explain this. And I'm taking a bit of a breather so that people can... I'm slowing down a bit so that people can actually understand. Right. Let's talk about indirect materials. We haven't... We really, we've got all our information on different pages and we've got amounts and we're going to fit in the amounts in a minute. Okay. Here we have our indirect materials. It is a stock account. Okay? Whenever you have a stock account, you have opening stock. So now you have to go and find an opening stock balance. You must have purchases. In other words, you bought indirect materials. You had opening stock of indirect materials. You bought indirect materials. And you have a closing stock. Okay. Whenever there's indirect materials, please note. Look for the opening stock. Look for the purchases. Look for the closing stock. So let's go and find it. Okay. Let's go and find the information. Learners, you have to know what you're looking for and then go and find it. Okay. Here I have consumable stores on hand, 9,600. There I have my opening stock for indirect materials. There they'll say indirect materials. There I have my 
opening stock for indirect materials okay now let me go and look for my purchases it's on my next page there they say indirect materials purchase 19,900 and I put that in indirect materials purchase 19,900 so I'm going to add that amount now I'll go and look for my closing stock okay it's on my next page indirect materials there we have it closing stock 1,800 okay so let's fill in the amounts let's go to the powerpoint and fill in the amounts there I have my indirect materials I have 9,600, 9, that's opening stock, plus 19,900, that is purchases, minus 1,800, that's closing stock. So that gives me 27,700. And a lot of learners make a mistake here. Okay, they don't put in the opening stock, they only put in the purchases. This is a stock account, opening stock plus purchases minus closing stock. Indirect labor, remember, learners, that they said the indirect labor, okay, was the factory foreman. He earned 90000 But remember, he's also going to have 1% of the contribution, okay, so it's 90000 1% of the contribution, plus 1% of 90000 is 900 plus 10,5% of 90,000. So you mustn't forget is 9,450. So when you read, you mustn't forget that it applies to all employees. So when you worked out your direct labor, remember the 196,000 for, for the 192,000, sorry, for the factory wages, you took 1% and you took 10.5%. Now when it comes to the indirect labor, the factory foreman, you do the same. 1%, 10.5%. Okay, so let's go to the PowerPoint again. And we're nearly done. There we go. That's our indirect labor factory foreman. 1% UIF contribution. 10.5% is our pension fund contribution. And we get 100 1350 and I'm hoping that people are working ahead there we have water and electricity 22,500 remember we worked it out and now we're just putting it in factory rates we worked out 8,820 we took half of the amount they said it's divided equally when they say it's divided equally you take half of the amount remember the factory rates was three quarters it was the ratio three is two one Factory insurance, we took half of the amount. It was divided equally. The vehicle expense one. Okay. There we go. 7250. And there's your depreciation, the amount that I worked out. And I'll give you some time to write it down. But you've got all the amounts anyway. There's your depreciation that I worked out. And that is your factory overhead costs. A really, really complicated one to work out, learners, and that's why most of the marks are usually allocated to that question. Okay, it's quite a big question, and most of the marks are allocated to that. So I'm hoping that you're still writing down. If you can just keep it on, keep the overhead on, the PowerPoint on. And there we go, 216,965. Just jot down those amounts, please. Fold in, and I'm hoping that you're going to tell me that, it, that you've got it and that I'm not moving too fast. Remember, learners, in accounting, you are going to be working over three or four pages. And you really have to learn to manage and organize your thoughts accordingly. Okay, it's always very, um, very difficult when you've got, um, you have to fit in information over three pages onto one page but that's really the layout of accounting it's being it's being able to gather your information properly so my I always say write down what you need and then go and find it instead of working from the three pages onto the one page you say to yourself what is it that I need on this one page and now I work systematically there's a question that says what are factory rates um, Rates needs to be paid to the municipality. Okay, it's the it's the, the 
you pay rates for the usage of water, the usage for sewage, the dirt collection, and all of those sorts of things. So factory rates is really the rates that you pay, like the rates and taxes that you pay, the rates that you pay on the building for the use of municipal services. So that's what factory rates are. So I hope I answered that question. Okay, now learners, what we're gonna do is we're gonna fill in the production cost statement, okay? We're gonna fill in the production cost statement and there we have our production cost statement again. Okay, so you have to have your production cost statement in front of you. Your answer sheet for the production cost statement, you've now got all your notes. Okay, so we're first going to look at our direct material cost note. What was the answer for that note? Okay, if you go to the bottom of that note, you'll see that there we go, 428,900 and 428,900 you're going to put in opposite your direct material cost on your production cost statement. Okay. Then our next thing we're going to look at is note number two, our direct labor cost. There's our direct labor cost on note number two. Okay, that's what we worked out. If you go to the bottom of note number two, it's there. And you're going to put that in on your production cost statement. Okay, so you've got those two items on your production cost statement. You're busy writing them in. Now, it's on page 63. It's all filled in for you. And now you're going to add the two together. And it's going to give you your direct costs. So you're going to add 428,000, okay, and 214,000 you add in, and it's going to give you 643,649, okay. You're filling in, and you're just copying from your notes now. You've worked out everything, you're just copying from your notes, okay. Next is we're going to go to factory overhead costs. We're going to go to note number three that we worked out, and we're going to put in 216,965. Okay. So, you're going to take direct costs. You're taking direct costs. Now, you've got it. You're taking factory overhead costs. Okay, you've got that. You first put in that from note number one. It's the bottom of note number one. Then you put in that, which is the bottom of note number two. You added the two together to give you that amount there. And now you take your factory overhead costs. You add direct costs plus factory overhead costs to give you total manufacturing costs. Okay, so learners, you simply copy that over. Your calculation is very important. You copied that over, you copied that over, you added that together, and you put the total there. Then you copied that over, you took direct costs plus factory overhead costs, and you now have total manufacturing costs. Okay. Now you go to your balances. Okay, so if we can just put this up again, we can just put this up, okay, there we have our balances, we now need our work in progress or work in process at the beginning of the year and we're going to put that amount in, you see knowing the format of your production cost statement also saves a lot of time, so you're putting in that amount, work in process at the beginning of the year, you're going to put that in. Okay, we're on page 52. Then you're going to go all the way to your last page to get your work in process at the end of the year on page 54. You're going to put that amount in. Okay. So let's do that. Let's go to the PowerPoint. 
There we go, work in process at the beginning of the year, we found by our opening balances, we're going to take these two here, okay, we're going to take that plus that amount, we're going to take those two, add them together to get that total there. We're going to subtract work in process at the end of the year, okay, and we're going to get 800,000, and that is the correct balance. Someone said to me, my adding was wrong. I don't think my adding was wrong, learners. You must have written an amount down incorrectly, but that is the correct amount. Cost of production of finished goods, 800,000, and that is the reason why we calculate our production cost statement. So let's just go over quickly what we did. Firstly, learners, we did our first note. Okay, we did note number one, which was the note for our direct materials, which is our raw materials. So you first start with note number one. Then you do note number two, which is your direct labor costs. Then you do note number three, which is your manufacturing overheads. Another word for manufacturing overheads is factory overheads. So you first do your three notes. You memorize the notes and you know exactly what goes in those notes. Then you find the information and you slot it into those notes. You know, it's similar than doing any financial statement, like doing the income statement. You, you need to know what goes into the income statement. You need to know what goes into the balance sheet. And you simply take the information and you fill it into those notes. If you're not going to work that way, learners, you are going to become very confused. So the first thing you do is you study your notes. Second thing, you write down exactly what needs to go into those notes. You start with note number one, then you move on to note number two, and then you do note number three. Once you finish note number three, you take that information and you start putting it onto your production cost statement. So now you're simply filling or transcribing information onto your production cost statement. After you finish your production cost statement, your final total is your cost of production for the year for on the production floor or on the factory floor. Okay, someone asked me a question, what about salaries? Learners, I told you, it is only the salary to the factory foreman or the factory security or factory related salaries. You don't take all salaries into consideration. You don't take the administration salaries into consideration. You don't take the salaries for the sales staff into consideration. So if you look at this information here that's given, okay? This information here, if you can just look at this here, you can see there's office stationery purchased. We don't take that. It's office related. Okay. We don't take um, advertising, like I said. It is not factory related. We don't take salaries admin staff. We don't take salaries sales staff. It is not factory related. We also don't take something called bad debts. Because bad debts is not factory related. Advertising is not factory related. So we're not going to use all the information that they give you here. You only take stuff that's relevant to the factory. And I'm hoping that I solved that problem. So that is the production cost statement learners. I've seen it occur in every exam. You have to study its format. You have to practice. There's actually a lot of nice questions in your booklet. Go and practice those questions. It's not a very easy question. You're working with ratios. You're working with percentages. You're working with sharing equally. You have to really be able to understand what you're writing. And please don't forget, only factory related. Okay. Now I just want to do break even with you. I'm just going to explain it. We're not going to do an exercise on it. I just want to explain to you what break even is. And we have about five minutes in which to do so. Okay, so if you can turn your attention to the overhead. I'm actually going to miss that. Right, break even analysis. Before you can do break even, you have to know the difference between fixed and variable costs. Okay, fixed costs are manufacturing costs that do not vary according to production levels. In other words, if you produce five items, the fixed costs stay the same. If you produce a thousand items, the fixed costs stay the same. Okay, rent is an example, and manufacturing overheads is an example, and administrative costs is an example of fixed costs. They stay the same if you produce five or if you produce a thousand. Variable costs. 
manufacturing costs that vary according to the number of units produced. If you produce five, your variable costs are going to be low. If you produce a thousand, your variable costs are going to be high. So that varies, changes. Okay, another word for variable is changing costs. Fixed stays the same. An example is direct materials, direct labor, sales and distribution costs. Okay. So what is break even? The break even point is where marginal income is equal to fixed costs. Okay, here's a little graph. There you have, your, and I'll tell you what marginal income is in a minute. So it's where marginal income is equal to fixed costs. Here you have a graph, that's your fixed cost. Can you see it stays the same? There's your marginal income, and at that point, your marginal income equals your fixed cost. And the number of units you produce then allows you to break even. In other words, at that point, you're covering all your fixed costs. After that, you start showing profits. Okay, remember, you're still paying your variable cost. Okay, you still, your variable cost will always vary. It'll always, you'll always pay that, but you'll stop covering your fixed costs. So, what are marginal, what is marginal income then? Marginal income is calculated as follows. Selling price minus variable cost per unit. Okay, so you take your selling price per unit and you minus your variable cost per unit and you get your marginal income. So your formula for break-even, maybe you want to write this down somewhere. Your formula for break-even is your total fixed costs over, that's a divide by sign, that's over your selling price per unit minus your variable cost per unit. Not your total selling price, your selling price per unit minus your variable cost per unit. And that gives you your break even in units. In other words, you say it's so and so many units that you are producing. Here's our example. If it's you, and you can just watch. If you, if you watch, you'll be able to understand. The selling price of a t-shirt is 20 rand. The variable cost of a t-shirt is 16 rand. It means that for each t-shirt, contributes four rand towards paying fixed costs okay here's our example if total fixed cost is 240 rand then our break even is 60 units let's look at it again our selling price is 20 rand our variable cost is 16 rand it means that each t-shirt contributes four rand towards paying fixed costs so how many four rands do you need to pay that 2 rand 40, you need 64 rands. So you're going to sell 60 units and 60 units will cover the 240 rand. 60 units at 4 rand will cover the 240 rand. Here's our formula. We take 240 rand divided by 4, which is 20 minus 16, divided by 4 and you get 60 units. So it will take 60 units to break even. Let's test that. If I sell 60 units at 20 Rand, I get 1,200 Rand, okay? My variable cost, 60 units at 16 Rand is 960 Rand, which means that my marginal income is 240 Rand. My total selling price minus my total variable cost. My marginal income, which is 4 Rand remaining, okay, 240 Rand. My fixed cost is 240 Rand, so there's no profit. So it means that each t-shirt contributes four rand towards more marginal income and towards my fixed costs. So therefore, learn as if we can just go back just to see my formula. Total fixed costs over marginal income. Another word for marginal income is contribution. Okay. And I have 60 units produced to break even. Break even is also very important. They always test break even. So please, you have to study that formula. It is total fixed costs over marginal income. Another word for marginal income is contribution. How do you calculate that? Selling price per unit minus variable cost per unit. Learners, I hope that you had a fun lesson. Um, accounting is one of those subjects where you really have to be methodical in other words you have to have all this information in front of you you have to kind of sift through this information to get one answer
And so when I have three pages in front of me and I'm working between all three pages, it means that I want to take three pages worth of information and condense it into one page. And you really have to be fast. You have to remember things. So learners, the only way you're going to be able to do that is to practice. I encourage you to practice and practice again. I really had fun with you today. I would like to thank you for, for staying at school until six o'clock. It's getting dark. And if you're a Muslim student, you'll probably have to go and break your fast quite soon. So thank you so much for coming and, and listening to me today. Thank you.